Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to start with one of the most dire consequences of the liver disorders. <coughs> As we have read about the hepatitis and different other conditions, these conditions which lead to the necroinflammation of the liver parenchyma, and when the liver parenchyma is damaged to such an extent that its normal scaffolding that is the normal lobular architecture is destroyed and this inflammation is of sufficient intensity that it pro is it's prolonged beyond a period of six months it leads to a condition which is known as the cirrhosis of the liver which means this is in fact a fibronodular condition why it's so called a fibronodular condition because you know that the liver normal microarchitecture is in the form of the hexagonal lobules. This structure is normally lost in case of the cirrhosis. It depends upon the extent of necrosis. The necrosis may be very mild as is in case of the hepatitis A or it may go on to develop or may go on to involve whole of the uh, liver in case of fulminant hepatitis it may involve a small portion of a lobule only or multiple lobules only or it may involve the major portion of the liver so this fibronodular condition is known as the cirrhosis of liver and this is because of the different necroinflammatory conditions the three prerequisites for its diagnosis that is the requirement of the Histological diagnosis of the cirrhosis of liver are the disruption of the normal lobular architecture, formation of regenerative nodules. As you are all familiar with, the liver has got a remarkable capacity of regenerations. These are the cells from the canal of hearing from which it can regenerate. And if the normal scaffolding is preserved, it may acquire its normal architecture without leaving behind any consequences. Otherwise, when the normal scaffolding is destroyed, what is meant by that? I'll in a while explain to you what happens when this normal architecture is lost and how is it lost. And that leads to the formation of the fibrous septa. These fibrous septa may extend from the portal to the portal to the other portal triad or portal to the central vein and central vein to the cent from one central vein to the other central vein. Now, what are the different conditions? The etiological classification of cirrhosis of liver which can lead to this dire condition that is the post viral or post necrotic. Post viral, the two most notorious among them are the hepatitis C and the B. The C, you may recall from the previous uh, discussion that it is responsible for the 85% of the cases who go on to develop the chronic liver disease. While on the other hand, the B, there are two stages, the non-progressive and the progressive hepatitis. The progressive hepatitis means there is ongoing inflammation or the necrosis of the liver substance and that may lead to the cirrhosis of the liver. The deficiency of alpha-1 antitrypsin is one of the cause. The hemochromatosis, primary and secondary, you are all familiar with that. You are familiar with the alpha-1 antitrypsin. Hemochromatosis, this is because of the excessive accumulation of the iron in the parenchyma of the liver and that may be primary or secondary. The primary, the defect is because of the HFE gene and the secondary one is because of the iron overload which may occur in certain conditions for example the patients of the thalassemia who have been given repeated transfusion of the blood they may or given excessive amounts of iron they may go on to develop hemochromatosis in, it, in, the, in this condition which we will discuss in detail when we will discuss the metabolic disorder similarly the Wilson disease this is because of the abnormality in the copper metabolism, because of the deficiency of a protein which is known as the celluloplasmin. The cardiac cirrhosis, though it's very rare, it occurs in case of prolonged right heart failure when, a, when there is prolonged congestion of the substance of the liver and hypoxia which leads to progressive damage to the liver. The biliary cirrhosis, 
we i gave you a little bit about its uh, its diagnosis its introduction while we were discussing with the hepatitis the primary and the secondary the primary one is of autoimmune origin and usually involves the middle aged women the secondary that is because of pro again because of the prolonged obstruction to the outflow of the bile that could be because of a number of conditions because of the inflammation of the bile ductules the indian childhood cirrhosis this is of unknown etiology but mostly most likely the underlying cause is the autoimmune one the drug induced for example the methotrexate a drug commonly used you know about it this is in fact a disease modifying drug which is used in the treatment of say rheumatoid arthritis and conditions like that aflatoxin which is responsible for the uh, damage to the liver and cystic fibrosis is a condition in which there is fibrosis of the liver and other organs in the body the cryptogenic or the idiopathic what is meant by that cryptogenic or idiopathic the cause of this is usually not known but a number of conditions for example the non alcoholic fatty liver disease and conditions like that can be there underlying this condition now if you can see this is again a repetition of the same that what are the different conditions you can see here chronic alcoholism autoimmune hepatitis non alcoholic steatopathies or steatohepatitis wilson disease hematomatosis drug and toxins similarly these lead to cell stimulation of the certain cells or the certain cells which normally are not responsible for laying down the fibrous tissue but in case of the cirrhosis when there is a release of multiple monokines cytokines different growth factor tumor necrosis factors etc they can lead to and what are the those there is normally stimulation of the kuffer cell you will know that these are the histocytes of fixed macrophages lining the space of this see the neutrophils and t cell leading to secretion of the various cytokines like tumor necrosis factor alpha transforming growth factor beta which in turn activate the uh, quiescent cells the cells uh, cytocells resulting in the production of the prophyrotic mediators and the expression of their receptors pathogenesis of the cirrhosis thus involves three major mechanism number one is the hepatocellular death means this death of the cells leading to necrosis that could be necrosis or the apoptosis both the regeneration of the hepatocytes but these hepatocytes when they regenerate they don't regenerate in the typical fashion because the scaffolding is lost so they may form smaller or larger nodules and the progressive fibrosis again this is a repetition of what we have already learned the cells involved in the fibrogenesis are the kuffer cells the platelets the hepatocytes the endothelial cell the stellate cell this is one of the most important cell which is involved in the fibrogenesis because uh, normally this is a fat storage or the vitamin a storage cell but when under the under certain conditions whenever there is a chronic inflammation it may change its characteristics and it may convert into uh, fibroblastic like cells laying down the collagen cells of chronic inflammation the mononuclear cells and the fib uh, macrophages lymphocytes and finally the fibroblasts these are involved in case of the cirrhosis of here is a diagram which has been taken from the uh, robins you can see here normally a delicate collagen fibers are lying in the space of dc along with the present stellate cells the kuffer cells are there the endothelial cells the and <clears throat> the hepatocytes they have got a certain relation and under the condition when there is a necro inflammation or there is inflammation because of certain cells the stellate cells they are activated they become myofibroblast like cells they proliferate they contract they uh, lead to chemotaxis they lead to fibrogenesis and the activated kuffer cells they release cytokines that promote the proliferation because of the and, and other factors are for example the platelet derived growth factor the tumor necrosis factor the contraction of these cells is because of the endothelium one the chemo chemotaxis is there because of the 
MCP1 that is a membrane cofactor, platelet led drive growth factors, transforming growth factor beta, these all they lead to excessive deposition of the collagen in the space of the C plus the necrosis of the cells, the apoptosis of these cells that lead to the formation of the uh, regenerative nodules, death of cells and ultimately what are the clinical outcomes of the cirrhosis? Clinically, cirrhosis may be divided into compensated and decompensated. Here, one thing which I have missed is the what happens when there is hepatocellular dysfunction. The hepatocellular dysfunction would be reflected in the form of reduced synthesis of the different substances which are very crucial to the maintenance of the internal environment and what are those? the serum albumin you are all familiar with that that it is responsible for maintaining the colloid on cortic pressure the different factors involved in the extrinsic system of coagulation they would be affected so there will be prolongation of prolongation of the prothrombin time the reduced albumin would be there reduced colloid on cortic pressure would be there that would lead to uh, ascites plus there is a decreased catabolism of the certain hormones, for example, estrogen, as we'll discuss what are the consequences of the cirrhosis upon our body. So these are the two things which happen there, and these are because of the number one, fibrosis, and number two, the hepatocellular dysfunction. Now, the clinical outcome of the cirrhosis may be divided into a number of things. It may be compensated and decompensated cirrhosis. The compensated cirrhosis means when the patient is not showing any say signs of the disease, symptoms and signs of disease, but they are limited or they are not of such a high significance. No significant clinical features except mild increase of the bilirubinin transaminase level may be seen and in, this is normally decompensated cirrhosis and in case of decompensation all these parameters they are disturbed. Clinical feature of cirrhosis, this may be divided into hepatocellular failure and portal hypertension. As I've already discussed, the hepatocellular failure is there, the portal hypertension, that is because of the increased resistance to the, because of the formation of the regenerative nodules and the communication between the hepatic and the portal blood. Hepatocellular failure will lead to bleeding tendency, I've told you, because of the decreased synthesis of the clotting factors involved in the uh, extreme system of coagulation plus there, are, there is normally a decrease in the concentration of uh, platelets as well gynecomastia that is again because I have told you the decreased catabolism of the estrogen in case of the males pitor hepaticus this is a fruity odor from the patients of advanced liver disease because of the amenical substances which are not being cleared off from the body spider nevi the, these we have all seen in case of the uh, cholestasis when you saw it, loss of sexual hair that is again because of that testicular atrophy that is because of the decreasing concentration of the uh, testosterone and increasing concentration of uh, the estrogen. Ascites, this, the ascites is caused by a number of factors. Number one is the portal hypertension and number two is the decrease in the level of the albumin and the ankle edema ultimately because it is the right side of the heart which is being in right side of the liver which is being in, sorry right side of the heart which is being involved so it will lead to ankle edema and finally whenever there is advanced liver dysfunction it will lead to coma hepatic p coma and effects of portal hypertension the esophageal varices i told you there are certain uh, say the communication between the portal and the systemic circulation one is in the lower wall lower uh, wall of the lower portion of the esophagus from where normally these patients they bleed whenever there is portal hypertension congestive gastropathy this is one cause in which the patient has got say dyspeptic symptoms rectal varices may be there dilated abdominal vein i told you about when we were discussing about the plastasis, caput medusae, splenomegaly, the spleen enlarges because of two factors. Number one is the portal hypertension, and number two, as a portion of the reticular antigenic system, when more antigenic material is not being filtered by the liver, the spleen would enlarge. The hematomesis, again, it could be because of two things it could be because of the esophageal varices and because of the congestive. 
So this is a diagram showing you the what are the consequences of this error. So you can see here decrease albumin synthesis, decrease colloid on cortic pressure, increase hydrostatic pressure that is the portal hypertension. So that would lead to that would be transmitted to the mesenteric capillaries where would be, there would be increased pouring down of the fluid into the peritoneal cavity leading to ascites. Similarly, the lymph exudation, the lymphatics, you must recall or remember when we were talking about the portal triad, there is a one structure which is the liver lymphatics, those are also blocked and that would lead to the formation of abdominal fluid. So the number of factors which are involved in the formation of ascites are the decreased colloid on cortic pressure because of the decreased synthesis of the albumin, increased hydrostatic pressure because of the portal hypertension and the lymph exudation, they all combine together to form the abdominal fluid which is known as the ascites. And this decreasing intravascular volume, what it is, what effect it is going to have upon the body when there is a decrease say perfusion of the kidneys there would be increased secretion of the aldosterone so this would give rise to secondary hyperaldosteronism and as a result there would be increased sodium reabsorption and when the sodium would be reabsorbed definitely it would carry water with it so this these multiple of the factors they keep on to enhance the formation of this acidic fluid and plus the dependent edema is there in case of patient with advanced chronic liver disease or the sources of liver here you can see another diagram. This is again to explain the different effects of the cirrhosis. The cirrhosis portal hypertension that leads to formation of the carotid channels, bleeding varices, hepatic encephalopathy. This is because of the bypassing of the different substances, especially the ammonical substances, which go there in the brain and they act as a false neurotransmitter leading to the hepatic encephalopathy that may be manifested in the form of hepatic B coma and advanced the hepatic coma. The ascites is there because of the increased plankling flow, peripheral arterial vasodilatation, central endothelial that can lead to hepatorenal syndrome, hyponatremia. I told you about that hepatopulmonary syndrome, high ca output cardiac failure may be there because of the increased retention of the fluid, because of the high concentration of aldosterone, etc. The lab diagnosis, this is simply a formality. The lab diagnosis is quite evident that what we want to know about is what it is because of the earth, because now the treatment is, uh, is available for the earlier changes, the chronic liver disease when it is in the earlier stages and there is some, I don't know, the fibro scan is available, we can assess the intensity of the fibrotic process. So we should go for the normal routine test, the CBC, the complete blood count would tell us about the anemia and the decreased blood blood count, etc. ESR is raised in almost all, any body condition whenever there is inflammation test for serological markers. Serological markers are done to differentiate between different types of cirrhosis. Is it because of the viruses? Is it because of the autoimmunity or because of the other toxic substances but the specific LFT is the albumin global level and the ratio of the albumin to global normally this there will be a uh, decrease in the albumin global ratio because the globulin level is increased the albumin level is decreased and that is because of the decreased synthesis of the albumin and increased formation of the globulin the globulins are formed because of the uh, increased immune challenge from the antigenic material returning from the gut wall. The level of the transaminases that would be definitely raised and along with the alkaline phosphate and GDT, the alkaline phosphate would be specifically raised in cases like primary biliary cirrhosis. As you know, this is of such a condition which can lead to the raised level of the alkaline phosphate. And finally, the liver biopsy is done to assess the level of the cirrhosis of or the fibrotic process. Now we are coming towards the gross and microscopic appearance. Once the cirrhosis of liver was classified not only upon the etiological basis but also the appearance of the nodules. So 
uh, depending upon the size of the nodules it was divided into the macronodular and micronodular if the size of the nodules were less than 3 millimeters it was used to be called as the micronodular and if it is more than 3 millimeters it was used to be said as macronodular but it is now known that it doesn't help us much in the treatment though the micronodular in earlier condition may be less injurious as compared to the macronodular which is more advanced form as you can see here this is a micronodular the liver substance the liver is not so much decreased in size but here in case of macronodular you can see here there is much decrease and much distortion of the liver substance this is the histological picture you can see here this is a nodule which is formed this small vacuole you can see here these are because of the fatty chain and this is one of the most prominent feature in case of two things the hepatitis c and the alcohol they may be responsible for this in B, some other changes now after this brief introduction one of the most important causative agent of the cirrhosis and a number of two other conditions the hepatitis and the alcoholics here the alcohol how it affects and what are the consequences of the excessive use of the alcohol the alcohol you know is normally oxidized in the or met metabolized in the body by the microsomal ethanol oxidizing system uh, the three pathways are the alcohol oxidation, macrosomal ethanol oxidizing system and the cytochrome P2E and P450 which are involved in the metabolism of alcohol and this is how the alcohol is metabolized in the body. But the ultimate result of it is that alcohol takes away a number of things from that while it is being metabolized. For example, the alcohol dehydrogenase, there it, it causes the reduced level of the NAD which prevents the body from the uh, toxicity of the oxidative or reducing agents. The acetaldehyde is formed. The acetaldehyde is again directly a toxic material. And the acetaldehyde by the enzyme LDID adenase is again converted into acetate. And finally, oxidation in the peripheral tissue converts into, into carbon and water. The main injury because of the excessive alcohol use is because of the depletion of these reducing uh, equivalents and the uh, formation of acetaldehyde which is directly toxic to the uh, body plus the liver acting as a say, source of energy it causes substrate deviation that the body tends to get energy from it while the fats and other things they are disturbed in what way here you can see the substrate supply NAD, HNAD ratio is changed. This will supply glycerol 3 phosphate. This is a backbone for the synthesis of the fats. The dietary fat intake and there is a reduced reduction in the oxidation of the fatty acids. That is also because of the uh, effect of the alcohol and there is increased fatty acid synthesis. So the increased fatty acid synthesis and the provision of the backbone in the form of glycerol 3 phosphate would lead to the increase the sterification and formation of the triglycerides another fact is the decreased export of the VLDL from the liver so this in fact by causing the increased accumulation of the fats in the cells which causes the injury to the cells and the alcohol by itself uh, the product of the alcohol metabolism the SLD height can lead to the antigenicity of the cells so this is how the alcohol leads to injury to the cells leading to this the other things you can see here there is a decreased reticular endothelial function the gut permeability is increased the lead to endotoxemia and the monocyte the macrophages they are activated lead, leading to the release of the tumor necast alpha into lipid one and into lipid six which are they enhance the chronic inflammatory process and in alt alternately to the, the alcohol liver disease you know, can roughly be divided into three different types of the what are the one the 
the first of all is the alcoholic steatosis this is a milder form and this is reversible if the use of the alcohol is discontinued at a certain time the alcoholic hepatitis that is because of the acute inflammation it will be manifested in the form of the neutrophilic infiltrate in the hepatic parenchyma and ultimately there is cirrhosis of liver the first two conditions they are reversible to some extent but the third one is you know is an irreversible condition and this is how you can see here in this diagram normal liver severe exposure that would lead to hepatitis liver cell necrosis inflammation formation of the mali bodies the fatty chain and the abstinence of the alcohol can lead to reversal back while the exposure again here you can see can lead to fatty change the perivenular fibrosis abstinence can prevent it but when the exposure is severe prolonged it would ultimately lead to cirrhosis of the liver alcoholic steatosis that may be in the form of microvesiculae the microvesicles they accumulate in the hepatocytes and would be macrovesicular and the macrovesicular is normally progressive the microvesicular is non progressive or may revert back because uh, alcoholic hepatitis this is manifested or you can what are the findings of alcohol hepatocyte swelling and necrosis with accumulation of fat and water and cholestasis that is stasis of the bile is there the mallory bodies cytokeratin schemes bright is the inclusions are seen in the cells the neutrophilic reaction in the lobule and around the cells with the mallory bodies this is mallory bodies they are to some extent characteristic but not specific for the alcoholic liver disease you should remember i repeat once again the alcoholic hepatitis would be manifested in the form of hepatocyte swelling and necrosis i don't need to explain what what is the cause of the swelling of the cells accumulation of fat and water and the plastosis is there this would lead to it mallory bodies these are the schemes of cytokeratin means the tang tangles of the cytokeratin material which appear as bright is of influence in the cells and the neutrophilic reaction is there here you can see the alcoholic hepatitis with balloonic degeneration mallory dank bodies and steatosis neutrophilic polymorph infiltrate around the hepatocyte uh, i can show you here with the help of pointer works you can see here these are these are the neutrophils these are the neutrophils the neutrophils the this is the mallory dank bodies the skins of the eosinophilic material these are the degenerated hepatocytes you can see here similarly these are the small they are the apoptotic the cells similarly these are the apoptotic cells these rounded this is a plasma cell this is a lymphocyte here this is again a plasma cell so this you can see in case of the uh, alcoholic liver disease this is again a diagram showing the acute alcoholic hepatitis hepatitis at the hepatocytes they are ballooned this is i can show you the ballooned hepatocyte which has been encircled in this you can see here small bubbles these bubbles are because of the fat similarly this is again a balloon balloon cell you can see here this is because of the accumulation of the fat in the form of fat droplet droplets the mallory bodies and the alcoholic hyaline which is known as is also can be seen as the purplish red which is there in this slide so the end stage sorbitic alcohol liver disease establish micronodular cirrhosis you can see here these are the micronodules formed you can see here this is a this is a micronodule which i am encircling now this is formed a micronodule and this whole area shows the loss of the hepatic parenchyma you can see here i hope you would understand it this area which uh, i will highlight with the i change the color this is the hepatic nodule and this is the 
degenerated spatic substance for the parenchyma formation of the fibrous septa you can see here the NAF family now after these two important things the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease there are some patients in which there is no evidence of the hepatitis B or C and there is no evidence of the use of alcohol but still they go on to develop the cirrhosis of liver or the fatty liver and what it could be this to term uh, NAFLD or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease has been applied and this is manifested in the form of hepatic steatosis without the use of alcohol simple hepatic steatosis may be there or non-alcoholic hepatic steatopathies or the, to which the term NASH is applied in which there are all features of the chronic inflammation leading ultimately to the cirrhosis of liver this is a diagram in which you can see how the different factors they interact with each other to lead to the uh, formation of the say cirrhosis of liver what factors are involved those are poorly understood but because of the obesity the insulin resistance is there in metabolic syndrome is a condition in which there is uh, say uh, impaired fasting hyperglycemia along with increased body mass index along with the increased level of the triglycerides along with the hypertension and the BMI these factors they can lead to the accumulation of the pro-inflammatory cytokines for example the adipokines and others tumor necrosis factor alpha interleukin 6 etc they are increased fatty acid in the body because of the de novo lipogenesis and increase the policies these patients have got a partial insulin resistance and this insulin resistance you are all familiar with that that there is a hormone which is known as the lipase which is sensitive to the minor amounts of insulin and insulin keeps it inhibited so when there is a decrease in the level of insulin or there is insulin resistance that will lead to increase lipolysis and increase fatty acid so all these things they combine together to give rise to the NASH or non-alcoholic steatopathies ultimately cirrhosis and they, that may culminate into the hepatocellular carcinoma this is a detail of the different uh, terms which have been used for VAT what is meant by VAT the visceral adipose tissue the FFA the free fatty acids TG stands for the triglycerides PA plasminogen activator inhibitor factor 1 TNF you are all familiar to monoclonal factor alpha interleukin 6 the reactive oxygen species are there which also lead to the oxidative injury the TLR4 tall like receptors DAG diacylglycerol the endoplasmic reticulum which is involved in the synthesis of this fibrous tissue and NASH is the term applied to non-alcoholic steatopathies hepatocellular carcinoma so these are the different terms which I have tried to explain so this is how the NASH what is NAFLD the spectrum of the liver diseases which may be there are the steatosis or that could lead to NASH and ultimately cirrhosis the difference between the steatosis is that in the steatosis only there is a fat accumulation there is no evidence of the inflammation there is no evidence of the liver damage but the fat is anyhow accumulated in NASH as the term you can see is the steatohepatitis there is evidence of inflammation there is evidence of necrosis there is evidence of evidence of the fibrosis and cirrhosis as you all know this is a fibronodular condition so the formation of nodules would be there the evidence of inflammation will be there and this would lead to cirrhosis of liver now natural history of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease how the risk factors i have told you overweight obesity metabolic syndrome dyslipidemias type 2 diabetes mellitus polycystic ovarian syndrome that can lead to nafld and it progressively in the nash this is the isolated liver steatosis 
F0 means there is no evidence of fibrosis. F1 there is about 25% of the liver that may be involved. F2 more than that, and F3 and 4 progressively there would be the decompensation formation of cirrhosis. Entire liver is involved in case of F4, and that may lead to the hepatocellular carcinoma as well. Finally, this is an, again a slide to explain the healthier liver you can see here. The NFLD, the liver is mildly enlarged, appearing slightly yellowish in this coloration. The NASH, you can see here, it has become much paler or yellowish in the color, and this condition would lead ultimately uh, until the NASH. It may be reversed, but when the cirrhosis is there, so it becomes irreversible. You can see here the microscopic picture, the small fat droplets are there, but in case of the and NAFLD, the vacuoles, the lipid vacuoles or the lipid droplets, they get enlarged and when they are so much enlarged, they give rise to the damage to the cells and damage ultimately that leads to necrosis and inflammation is there and whenever there is inflammation and the condition is prolonged, it will lead to the uh, formation of the fibrous tissue and the scarring would be there leading to the cirrhosis of liver. Predisposing factors, we have been repeatedly discussing metabolic syndrome, obesity, dyslipidemia, and insulin resistance are there. The pathogenesis, again, hepatic fat accumulation, hepatic fat, oxidative stress would be there. So that would lead to the development of the NASH and the ultimately hepatic hepatitis. Features of NASH, hepatocytes, ballooning, lobular inflammation and steatosis. So somebody is asked you what are the features, histological features. So you will write down there is a ballooning of the hepatocyte and why it is there because of the accumulation of the fat and fat droplets in the cells. Laboral inflammation when the cells they are necrose there would be the second thing is to come here is the inflammation and finally this steatosis is one of the features that is the accumulation of the fat. This you can see here using the trichrome strain. You can see here these the vacuoles, the fat vacuoles, and the whole liver architecture has been disorganized. The small nuclear apoptotic nuclei you can see here. You can see the uh, these are the apoptotic nuclei, and the fat is accumulated in it. These are fat vacuoles and this is the area of portal triad. You can see here the inflammation around it. Hepatic failure, the ultimate end point of all these conditions, the cirrhosis of liver because of either the say viral disorders because of the metabolic disorders because of the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease that lead that may lead to either acute liver failure which is rarely associated with these chronic conditions it usually is with the acute uh, injury for example the hepatitis a may sometime lead to acute fulminant hepatitis and acute liver failure or it may be acute upon chronic the acute liver disease is associated with encephalopathy within six months of the initial diagnosis. So it occurs fulminant hepatitis. Hepatic failure means when it takes very rapid to the liver failure and this is usually within the two weeks of the onset of the jaundice. A patient who has got this disease, he or she would uh, very rapidly deteriorate and will get the fulminant hepatitis. The evidence of fulminant hepatitis from the serology, we can do it when we get the initial level of the transaminases that we usually raise. But we should be very, very vigilant when it suddenly starts dropping while the condition of the patient instead of improving is deteriorating. So we should keep in mind that he or she may not develop the fulminant hepatitis. Subfulminant hepatic failure and cephalopathy develops within three months of the jaundice. So this is a bit longer period in which it may go on to develop the liver failure. 
alterations that can lead to hepatic failure fall into three categories the acute liver failure i told you that acute liver failure could be because of the acute damage and that acute damage is because of either some sort of viral disorders or direct toxicity to the liver for example certain drugs carbon tetrachloride for example if you have heard about patients going into acute liver failure after they have been given general anesthesia allotene is the one which can lead to that the chronic liver disease this is one of the most common cause and it leads to the progressive liver failure but the liver may fail suddenly whenever there is a lot of damage to that if you could recall the patients with hepatitis b in which there is either super infection with the delta virus these are the patient those who may go, go on to develop sudden or the acute liver failure hepatic dysfunction without overt necrosis in this condition there may be dysfunction of the hepatocytes but there may be no uh, necrosis the clinical features of that of the cirrhosis are jaundice hypoalbuminemia hyperammonemia palmer erythema spider angiomas hypergonadism uh, sorry hypogonadism and gynecomastia all these conditions i have explained jaundice because of the hepatocellular failure because of the obstruction to the flow of bile hypoalbuminemia again because of the decreased synthesis of the albumin hyperammonemia the ammonical substances returning from the gut they bypass the liver and they are not converted to urea which is excreted from the body so the ammonia that goes on to affect the brain the palmer erythema is a condition because of the increased vasodilatation spider angiomas these i have told you and explained in the condition when we talked about the cholestasis hypogonadism is because of the decrease level of the testosterone as compared to the increasing level of the estrogen in case of the male gynecomastia in the male is is again because of the increased level of the estrogen.